Good day and welcome to Emergency Medicine Topics. In one coffee, I'm Alan Giles. I'm an emergency physician and today's topic is graded assertiveness. Now this is following an online request I got. So I think many of us who work in a busy hospital have been in the situation where a senior clinician has asked for something to occur which we think not only is not correct but may be dangerous. An example of this may be to give uh, the wrong dose of a drug or to um, give an antibiotic to someone who's allergic to that antibiotic or perhaps when you're working as part of a resuscitation team going down the wrong algorithm. Uh, it's not only incorrect but it may be dangerous. And of course it is difficult to speak up. There's a power differential between yourself, nurse, intern, junior doctor, registrar, and the senior clinician. Even when you're sure that your senior clinician is going down a potentially dangerous direction, how do you bring up your concerns without, well, having at least an uncomfortable discussion, probably an argument, or even jeopardizing your own career? But of course you have to, to ensure patient safety and good clinical care. Playing behind me is a video which many of you may have seen called a routine operation. Uh, it's a simulation of the death of Mrs. Bromley and is narrated by her airline pilot husband. And it shows what happens when some of the senior clinicians in this case are fixated on a particular maneuver and the rest of the team is unable or unwilling to speak up. I'll put the link up there um, and I would recommend it to all of you to at least look at it once. Now for greater assertiveness to help you speak up there is a framework that's developed it's called the PACE framework. What I'm going to do is just show you a simulation video which we've made of a trauma team which accepts a poor decision made by the trauma team leader. Okay, from my point of view, I'm happy for you to intubate. If you're happy at your end. Starting intubation. Can you give me a call? I can see the tip notice. We do a nice vocal cords tube. Tube is in through the vocal cords. Yeah, line is for coming mark. out. I've got the tube at a level of 18 at the teeth level. Okay, 18 at teeth. Oxygen is on. We've got color change, Alan. Okay, good. Um, will you just check the chest for me, MASH, and then if everyone's happy, then we'll put the collar back on. Happy? Okay. Yeah, the entry is equal. Okay. So, I'm happy for the collar? Yes. Collar's coming back on. Great. Well done, everyone. <coughs> okay, so. He's got a decreased level of consciousness quite grossly and he's hypovolemic probably from a spleen. Does everyone agree? Yeah. Okay. So my plan is, I think we need to go to CT. I want to CT his head because I think he might have an extradural. Uh, and I'll roll over there or CT his neck and I'll CT his abdomen to see if there's a blush. Okay? Shall we give some blood before? Yeah, start the blood on the way through. Sure. Alan, you sure you want to go to CT? He's got a positive fast. Yeah, he's got a pretty grossly positive fast, uh, and I know he's hypovolemic, but I'm really concerned about that head. GCS, GCS is right down. I think he's going to have an extradural. We need to check that out first. So, come on, we've done really well to now. Let's get the porters together and let's get to CT. Come on, let's go. Well done. You can see how the team, against its better judgment, goes along with the poor decision by the team leader and it's likely to have a very poor outcome. Now we're going to do another video 
Basically, it's the same thing, but we're going to take it from just after the intubation. And we can see how the PACE framework will allow one of the team members to use greater assertiveness and then have a better outcome. From my point of view, I think from here we've got a head injury and we've got a, probably a splenic injury, the positive fast. I think with that decreased level of consciousness, we're going to need to go to a scan. I want to see the, whether he's got an extra dural. We'll do his neck and we'll do an abdomen to see if he's got a blush, deciding to go into ventral radiology or to theatre. Okay? Alan, you sure you want to go to CT? He's got a positive fast. Yeah, I know he's got a positive fast, but I think on balance, even with a positive fast, with that level of decreased level of consciousness, I think we should go to a scan first. That's that's my feeling. Can we can we just think about that? Because he's hemodynamically unstable as well. Um, I think yeah. he probably needs to go to theatre. Look, I know where you're coming from, but look, on balance, I think that that head really is concerning me. I think I'm going to pull rank and I think we should you know, the team leader decision, right. we should go. Let's just wait a moment, because he hasn't blown a pupil, he's very hemodynamically unstable. We know he's probably bleeding into his belly. I, I think theatre's probably the best thing for him. Well, I've done team leading a lot, and so have you, I understand that, but I think on balance that we should go, and we should do quickly, get out of here, get the pointers, we can go through a scanner and we can get into theatre pretty soon or go to interventional. That's, that's where I'm standing on it. No, I'm going to stop you there, Alan. He, he's going to die in the scanner if we take him to scanner. I think he, we need to talk to the surgeons and get him to theatre. Okay. What does everyone else think? Nash, what should we do? Uh, definitely he needs to go to the theatre. Needs to go to theatre? Yeah. Matt? Yeah, we need to talk to the surgeons. Go to theatre? Yep. Or, yeah. Nick? You can't send him to the theatre. Okay, righto. Okay, well, if we're going to go to theatre, go to the surgeon, let's do it quickly. So, right. Nash, can you get on to the surgeons right now? Yep. And Sandra, you'll be kind enough to talk to theatre? Yeah. Let's get the porters and get moving. Okay, let's do it. Cheers. Now, I'm not saying it's easy. And it seems to be in, in that trauma team, at least the team leader didn't seem too arrogant or inflexible. But it can be done, and it must be done. And the PACE framework gives you a structure in order to speak up. And when you're using it, realize that there's every chance that the rest of the trauma team or the resuscitation team or the people around you are thinking exactly the same thing. Okay. I think that'll just about do for a quick dive into greater assertiveness. Thanks for your attention, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.